Ernest, and today I will be giving a presentation on my summer's research, noise characterization of quantum amplifiers. Firstly, I'd like to move into what our lab does. I work in a quantum information lab, so what that means is we work with qubits. So to understand what a qubit is, you need to have some basic knowledge of quantum mechanics, namely superposition. So superposition is this weird idea from quantum mechanics that says you can be both here and there. You can be in two places at once. Okay. Then we move into what is known as a classical bit. So a classical bit gives this is what our current computers are run off of. So it's sort of binary, zeros and ones. So now you take the idea of superposition along with a classical bit, and you get a quantum bit. So a quantum bit is a superposition of both 0 and 1. Right here is actually one of the qubits fabbed in our lab, which is this little white square. It's the actual qubit. So someone may ask, why do we care about qubits? What are important about them? Well, if you can actually manage to couple together enough qubits and make a quantum computer, they'll be very fast, faster than any computer we have to this day. So very powerful computers. That's one benefit. But this isn't theory. This is if we can actually manage to couple together qubits to sort of make a quantum computer. So one of the things that we've shown already is that quantum mechanics is real. It's not this weird cooked up theory that doesn't represent anything. It's a physical representation of our world. Okay. But now, sort of moving into the signals coming from our qubits, you may suspect that the signal is very small, because quantum generally means small signal. right? So to actually be able to read this signal, you need to amplify it. So we use an amplifier to increase the signal. But now the problem is, is this amplifier will have this thing called noise. And if this noise is larger than the signal, it'll bury it. So it's important. Do we need to know, is the noise bigger than our signal? Okay. So this then moves into what my summer's research has been, noise measurement. So for those of you who may not know, noise is simply any undesired signal in your electronics. Okay? So now if the noise is very small, as you would hope it would be, it's actually difficult to measure how much noise is there. Right? So the current methods that exist for this are the Y-factor method and the hot-cold method. The problem with these methods is they're complicated. There's a lot of calibrations that you have to put to them. So this then leads into wanting to develop a new method so you don't add a lot of like extra effort to your experiment at hand. Right? So this thing goes into what I've been using, the new method, the shot noise tunnel junction. So uh, now let's briefly explain what the shot noise tunnel junction is. So just so I don't actually confuse anyone, I generally refer to it as the source. The shot noise tunnel junction and the source are the same thing. So don't get confused about that. So now I'd like to give a circuit diagram of what's actually going on. So as I said, we want to test the low noise amplifier with the use of the source. Okay? So to explain what's going on here, the source is a calibrated noise source. So this means that we know precisely the amount of noise that's coming out from it. The way that we change the noise coming out from it is with this bias voltage. So you change the bias voltage, which then changes the noise that's coming out of this, which is then fed into the low noise amplifier, which you then feed into your spectrum analyzer, which you are then able to do some data analysis and find the noise from your amplifier. I'll explain how that happens in a second. Uh, just for your knowledge, this here is a picture of our source. Uh, this is actually the box. The source is a chip inside this box, um, which is, and this here is an AFM image of that chip. So as I said, the noise coming from it is very precise. Well, that's due to the quantum tunneling of electrons through this junction. So just for clarification, the current runs from sort of in this direction, so going like this into our amplifier. Okay? So now to talk about how to extract the noise coming from our amplifier. Well, for those of you who may not know, noise temperature is just another way of pretty much saying what the power noise of your amplifier is. It's just a new convention that physicists like to use. So this here is a picture of what would be read out to the spectrum analyzer. Okay? So this is the total noise of your entire system. Tn is the noise of your amplifier. And this here is the noise of your source. And this g is the gain that your amplifier would be, how much it increases the signal. Okay? So to actually find the noise of your amplifier, you measure at one point, ideally 0 volts. And then you measure again at a higher voltage. 
and then you take the ratio of these two, and from that, you're able to extract the noise temperature. If this equation seems a bit daunting because there's a lot going on there, just simply take it as the y-intercept of your axis, or the, yeah, the y-intercept here is pr the noise of your amplifier, okay? So now, to just quickly uh, reiterate what equipment we use, the spectrum analyzer. So a spectrum analyzer is just a classical machine that's used in every lab to where you take some signal, feed it into there, and you're able to look at the power output from your components, okay? So we just take the shot noise, feed it into the amplifier, then take this amplifier and feed it into the spectrum analyzer. And then from there, we're able to do data analysis, okay? So now to move into some results. So first, we want to make sure that the source works as expected. We don't want it to be putting out something that's weird and wrong. So what I have here is I have a picture of the data actually collected and sort of a line of what the figure should look like. I didn't get a chance to actually do a data plot versus the theory. But as we can see here, the general curve is the same. And then I actually went in by hand and calculated and make sure that everything fits to theory and it works very well within a few dB. So then to actually move into the results of noise measurement. So I took one of our amplifiers in our lab that has a spec um, from the manufacturer, and I tested the noise source to make sure that it's within what we expect. The amplifier that we tested was supposed to have a noise figure of about 4.8. As you can see, it's roughly around 4.8 dB for the range of frequencies from 4 to 12 gigahertz. Uh, for those of you who may not know, again, noise figure is just another means of characterizing the noise temperature. So the relation is just right here. So then some of the conclusions we can get from this. Uh, well, first order, this is a very easy method to test the noise coming from your amplifiers. It doesn't have a lot of complicated calibrations to it. You just put in a known voltage, you switch it up a bit, and then you're able to find out what the noise of your amplifier is. Uh, another thing is it's a better, we're able to better understand what's going on with our amplifiers. So this is a very good way when we start to develop new amplifiers that maybe are less noisy to our uh, equipment that we can test it and make sure that it performs as expected. Um, and then as sort of a personal note for a conclusion, um, working in this lab has shown me I really enjoy quantum information. It's something I actually am intrigued by. It sort of bridges this weird quantum mechanics thing to real world. So it's really fun for me. But thank you.